and uh, we are starting uh, with the values-based systems in wound management to improve patient outcomes uh, with Alec Mason, from systems Trans who is the Systems Transformation Manager for Advanced Wound Care Management uh, from Smith and & Nephew. Um, now, Smith & Nephew, I will note, are also our um, core sponsors for today's event. And I'd like to thank them because actually their sponsorship today has enabled us to ensure that NHS staff can attend today um, on, bursary system, on bursary schemes. So we've been able to really uh, support NHS staff to get into this event because of the sponsorship. And so thank you to them. Um, second, and um, I, I, I'm in that prayerful mode because she hasn't arrived yet. But if you see somebody sneak up onto the stage, just ignore it, it's fine. Um, uh, because we will have Dr Una Adley, um, who is the director of the National Room Care Strategy Programme. Um, joining us, um, and uh, she will speak directly after Alec. So, Alec, can I ask you to start yeah. today? Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, John Owen. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be uh, here this morning to present uh, with you. I won't, um, like John Owen, get you to describe me uh, personally because I've got far too fragile an ego for, uh, for that. <laughs> Um, what I can rival John on is uh, job title, so I think I've not quite as long a job title as, um, and it's probably changed I think since <laughs> since the one that you read out. Uh, we do love our long, um, fairly meaningless job titles, um, so apologies for for that. But really, really good to uh, good to to meet you all. Um, what I'd like to present on uh, to you this morning a little bit more about my background. So um, I'm Alec Mason. I'm a um, really have a focus uh, within Smith & Nephew on digital health and value programmes. Um, my background is clinical. I, I think there was a show of hands earlier. Um, I think we've got a predominantly clinical um, audience. Um, so my background is, is clinical. I worked in the NHS for about 14 years, starting in the late 90s um, as a podiatrist, specialising, went on to specialise in diabetic foot wound management, um, and also led services in the NHS as well. Before about 10 years ago, jumping to the dark side and coming to work for a, a medical devices uh, company. Um, and I've worked for four or five different companies, predominantly around uh, wound, wound management. Um, I have to say, I think I'm privileged, I think, in my role in Smith & Nephew. Um, I'm still a very passionate advocate of wound management, very passionate advocate of uh, the NHS as well. And I think we, we aim to work in a consultative way with, uh, with the NHS. And I kind of what I wanted to talk through a little bit this morning was how increasingly at Smith & Nephew are trying to do that um, to ultimately improve outcomes, to mitigate risk, uh, to, to mitigate patient safety, um, safety issues. Um, I, I say I've got a focus in digital health, so I'll give you a couple of examples of different projects that we've been working on um, over the last uh, couple of years. Um, but we've also devised and, and recently launched a four-stage um, four change management pro programme. And as I say, when, when we're working... Um, consultatively with uh, partners in the NHS, we, we aim to follow this programme um, to ensure basically that we're not here just to sell a, a product, but to work uh, consultatively with you to ensure that we maximise the value, as I say, improve outcome and uh, ultimately hopefully mitigate, uh, mitigate risk. So just briefly a little bit of history of Smith & Nephew. Uh, hopefully most of you have heard of uh, us uh, as, as a, an entity. Um, we're a British, British company founded in the mid-1800s by Thomas James uh, Smith. Later went into partnership with um, his nephew, Horatio Nelson Smith, hence the name Smith and Nephew. Really humble beginnings. They opened a small chemist shop in Hull in 1856. Um, we invented elastoplast in uh, 19, uh, 1928. Um, really interesting history, but fast forward to where we are now. We're a FTSE 100 company operating in over 100 uh, countries around, um, around, around the world. 90% of our advanced wound management, um, the division I work for, R&D, is still led and executed here in the UK um, in, in Hull. And the good news is that's not going to change anytime soon. We've just recently announced um, the development of a, a brand new R&D facility um, up in Hull. We've had to move, we're going to have to move away from our original site because it's, it's uh, sadly really no longer fit for purpose. Uh, but it's really great news that, that R&D for wound management is staying in the, uh, in the UK for the foreseeable future. Um, something we're really, really, really um, pleased about. A little bit closer to here, 
Uh, in Watford is more our, our administrative, administrative head office. Um, and some of you may have visited our um, Smith & Nephew Academy. So we've got lecture facility similar to, uh, to the one we're in today. We've also got um, a lab so we can invite clinicians from uh, over the, around the UK and from around the world. We run things like wound debridement courses, um, and we run various different courses for surgeons to come and uh, use um, the orthopaedic implants on, um, on cadavers and, and, and so on and so forth. That can be broadcast uh, to different locations. So it's a brilliant facility. So if you do get the opportunity to, uh, to attend um, in the future, then that'd be great, to, be great to see you there. So back on to kind of the focus of um, the the discussion really and, and, and the focus of the session um, I don't know I, I'm aware that quite a few of you a majority by the uh, show of hands earlier from a from a clinical background I don't know how familiar you are with wound management <clears throat> and I just wanted to highlight a little bit around what we refer to as the burden of wounds um, in the UK so this is the data set um, published by a chap called Julian Guest a fairly well-known health economist certainly in the, in the world of wound management possibly not outside of the world of wound management but just want to kind of shine a light on, on um, the, what we call the, the burden of wounds. So you can see at the top there, the annual cost of wound management is estimated to be 8.3 8 billion pounds. It's a staggering cost for what is essentially, um, I think in some regards, <clears throat> a little bit of a hidden, hidden problem. And 60% of, of that, um, that 8.3 billion pound value is managing wounds that essentially aren't, uh, aren't, in, aren't improving. Sadly, the prevalence of wounds is also increasing. So um, this study has been kind of repeated in different points of time. There's a 71% increase in the prevalence of wounds uh, over that five-year uh, five period. There's also um, some deficiency and issue around the assessment of wounds. So there are some brilliant specialist-led services around wound management um, across, across the UK. But the vast majority of wounds are managed by non-specialists in lots of different settings. Um, and we know from this data set that, that there are issues around, uh, around wound assessment, particularly focused in that kind of generalist, non-specialist um, practice. This is fairly old data talking about a decline in community nursing services, but obviously there's not improved through uh, certainly the last few years. And if anything, the outlook and from the services that we work with, uh, things have only kind of got, um, got worse, uh, sadly. And the vast majority of that £8.3 billion pound cost um, is spent on, on human resource, so the nurse time, the doctor time, the, the healthcare professional time that, it, that, that uh, it takes to manage those wounds. Interestingly, wound products only account for 6% of, uh, of, of the cost. Um, and I think a big part of my role and, and what we, the way we're trying to change the narrative ultimately is, um, of course, you know, the 6% the cost is not, not to be shirked at. But we do have conversations with procurement colleagues in, in the NHS who are kind of very keen to talk to us about what can we do in terms of price of a particular product, reducing the price of the product. And of course, we're happy to have those conversations. But the point being is we've redesigned the way that we work um, because there's so much more that we can do to impact on that 72% in, in, in the positive way and really help um, streamline and make services more, uh, more, more efficient. So really, that's the kind of whole point of, uh, of that value piece and the part of my, my role. How we've done that is we've kind of transformed the way that we work and we've got a dedicated team uh, called the System Transformation Team. And really part of that is just aligning ourselves to the way the NHS has transformed. It's moving, obviously moved to um, an, integrated, uh, an integrated care model. Um, and within our System Transformation Team, we can bring specialism. So we've got a, a big group of clinical specialists that work within Smith & Nephew, uh, come from a healthcare outcomes background, um, health economics backgrounds. Um, we've got a team of, of, of um, people that are uh, really specialists around commercial innovations. So there's lots of different specialism that we can kind of bring, essentially. And what we're really um, passionate and obsessed of, of doing is the four themes that you can see on the screen. They're reducing cost, improving outcome, freeing up clinical time, improving quality of care. Uh, it's really important for us that we work, as I say, in partnership uh, to, to make sure we realise um, those, uh, those four, four themes. So how do we do that? We talk, I talked in, the, in my introduction about um, the four-step change management program that uh, we very recently launched uh, called the Compass Program. Very simple, similar to the PDSA cycle that's commonly used in, uh, in, in the NHS, but it's a simple four-step process just to make sure that we fully understand the challenge from the outset, that we're not there just to try and hammer a solution into a, a situation where we're potentially going to knock a, 
uh, a square peg into into a round hole, but we make sure we fully understand um, the baseline and, and issues, and we make a plan and, and move on from there. So what I'd like to do is just kind of talk you through um, this program using a couple of examples of uh, digital technologies that, that uh, programs that I've been kind of working on over the last um, uh, year or so. The, the, the first step is um, what we call orientate, which is really around finding the, the baseline of what the problem is. As I say, I think um, in the past, there were, and certainly in the, in the world of digital, um, without kind of due thought, pro, um, a system's being put into place without kind of really fully understanding why what the problem is in, 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 in the outset. And essentially what Orientate is, is really understanding uh, what's the local challenge, what's the, what's the local need, and what's the local, uh, what, what's the local problem. And we've got different ways and, and means and expertise uh, internally and resource within Smith Nephew to help, to help uh, achieve that. It's fair to say I think the, the NHS um, uh, systems that we work within don't always have that resource, they don't always have that expertise, and that's something else that we can, we, uh, that we can provide. So we can look at a, n a number of different things. So just, uh, again, there's some f further statistics here from Julian Guest's paper and a couple more at the bottom from a, a, a different paper. But this is all kind of looking as a, as a kind of working example at wound assessment specifically. So as I mentioned already, um, there are uh, a significant proportion of wounds that we know that don't have that differential diagnosis. So essentially we don't know uh, why the wound's there in the, in the first place. And then if we look at the way that wounds are assessed and, and, and treated, we can see there are potential deficiencies as well that could potentially lead to a poor outcome or indeed a, a harm or a, a safety concern. So particularly when we look at things like um, the, uh, how many patients with a leg or foot ulcer have had a, um, a ankle brachial pressure index, which for those who don't know is a pretty much gold standard uh, method of assessing the arterial supply to the lower limb. And we know that a significant, from, the, from this data set, a significant proportion of patients that haven't had that completed. We also know from the bottom couple of statistics that um, even though an assessment might be carried out, then the treatment might not kind of follow, follow suit. So potentially an appropriate use of different, a different products, which again can affect the patient outcome. It can also affect obviously the, the overall cost of, um, cost of the intervention, and the cost of a, a treatment. So what we have <coughs> is, um, as I say, a suite of different tools, but for wound assessment specifically, um, we've got um, what we call the Wound Compass Practice Review Tool. So as I say, the systems that we work with, quite often it's very hard for systems to get data around their own practice. So uh, we've designed and we've collated to date around about 12,000 different um, uh, sets of, of, of wound data um, across different services, predominantly within the, within the UK. But we can really start to look into specifically what the issues that there are facing around treatment, wound characteristics, dressings and infection. So we can look into those different ways and we can build a, build a report, but we can also obviously um, benchmark that against different, da different data sets. So we can start to look at things like practice variation in, in, in different sites. So we can produce a really rich uh, data set. And so we've got internally uh, a group of specialists that can help kind of interpret that, uh, that, interpret that data. We can also bespoke that as well. So as a different example away from wound assessment, another area that we've kind of particularly focused on is around the supply route of, of um, dressings, which again, you wouldn't necessarily think could potentially have an impact in the community on, on a patient's wound. But if you're a patient right now in the UK and you have a wound and let's say you're housebound and you're visited by a, um, a community nurse, for example, um, the chances are your wound dressing will be given to you via the prescription route. It's still the most widely used way of, of getting dressings to, to patients. However, we know that that route isn't necessarily kind of really fit for, fit for purpose for wound care, predominantly because as a community nurse visits a patient for the first time, they're not necessarily going to have access to the correct product that they, that they deem necessary for that patient at that given time. They'll request a prescription, but that's going to take five to seven days to get to, uh, to, to the patient. And the clinicians, this is a data set that we've collected um, ourselves, around 600 clinicians are fed into this. So 79% of, of nurses we, we spoke to with regard to this have said that not having access to that dressing at the point of care has had a negative outcome uh, for, for, for the patient. That could be around things like delayed healing, extra dressing changes. And in terms of resource, again, on average, spending 2.3 hours each week chasing and collecting prescriptions. So it's interesting how, um, as I say, seemingly kind of very hidden problem can potentially impact on um, the burden of wounds. It can potentially negatively impact on uh, the patient outcome. And as I say, 
um, potentially increase the risk of, of uh, patient safety, patient harm. So a couple of ideas of what we would look for in that kind of initial phase in terms of that, that assessing what the, what, the, uh, what the problem is. The next step of the process obviously navigates. Once we've done the upfront um, baseline and we get a full understanding of, of, of um, the challenges in the service, then obviously the next step is to, to, to make that plan and sit down and decide, well, what, what, what can we bring uh, in order to, to address the issues that we've discovered in that, in that initial phase? So in terms of wound assessment, a project that I've been working on quite closely for the uh, last few years um, is um, the development of, of a, a smartphone application, the Wound Compass Clinical Support app. So for quite a number of years as, as a company, we've supported services. On the right-hand side of the slide there, you see a, a poster. We'll produce these posters. That's based on a very well-known uh, wound paradigm. The problem with the posters are that they all sit on a, um, a wall of a clinic somewhere. Do people really look at them? How, how accessible are they? What we've essentially done is kind of evolve that into a algorithm-based um, application that guides a clinician through an assessment, um, gives them advice and guidance around the holistic management of the patient through that, and ultimately comes to an endpoint, which is a which is addressing select uh, addressing selection. So we've piloted this uh, in the UK. Um, about 18 months um, ago, our pilot work f finished, and we, we successfully showed across three different centres in the UK that the app can help reduce that practice variation. It's customised as well to the, to the local um, formulary, so it's not that every endpoint is a Smith & Nephew product. It's an agnostic um, solution in that regard, so we design it to, to basically mirror what, what, products are used, um, what products are used locally. We also know through the survey work that we did in the pilots that this does improve nurse uh, confidence. Very quick and easy to use as well, so it doesn't need to integrate and speak to any other system. It takes about 90 seconds to get from the beginning of the um, process to the end of the process, so it doesn't really impact much in the negatively in the workflow uh, for, uh, for the clinician. So this is a potential solution that we can put in place to address issues around uh, wound assessment. In terms of addressing supply, talked about the issues around prescription and what that can mean for um, an adverse effect for the clinician and for the, for the patient. Um, another system that we've had for, for a wee while that's growing quite growing steadily all the time, Formio, what we call our digital wound management ecosystem. At its core, it's a stock-based management system. So in the community, rather than um, having nurses and clinicians rely on prescription to get dressings to patients, they can maintain a stock of dressings at uh, their base. It means they've always got access to the, the product they, that they feel is most appropriate and uh, optimal. They're not wasting time chasing prescriptions. So um, A, it can potentially improve the outcome, and B, it can save the, save the clinician uh, time. We can also add different things into here as well around different local education. Again, it's bespoke to the, the, the local service, so they can populate um, any sort of information they want to disseminate out to their, uh, out to their clinicians. So working through the process, so once we've kind of um, done that work up front, once we've made the plan, it's then around um, put executing the plan and, and putting put it into into practice. So we've got a number of different tools that we can um, that we can implement. And I think the, I think the the key point to underline here is around the resource. And I guess from a project management perspective, as I say, the, the um, NHS partners we work with, we tend to find that resource is not, um, is not rich and any sort of support that we can provide around project management uh, is often uh, really, really well received. So we've got full implementation plans for every different solution that we, uh, that we can potentially implement um, and fully guide that, fully guide that through. Uh, you know, we're working with systems that are changing and evolving all of the time and we're kind of all learning as we kind of go through that, uh, through that process. But... I guess, as I say, the point to underline is that we can really provide that kind of resource and um, resource and uh, additional kind of support. And then the final stage of the process, and I, I, I'll kind of put my hand up here and say, certainly in um, in clinical practice, I, I think I think this is the one area that potentially we kind of forget uh, at the end. Whenever we try and implement any type of change, um, we can then kind of disregard and forget to evaluate and do that measurement and I think it's probably out of, out of every different step obviously all steps are important but it's arguably the kind of most important step because we need to understand has, has the change that we've implemented actually made a, hopefully a positive um, impact or has it made a negative impact or has it not changed things and in which case we might need to, um, to to course correct and do something and do something different so 
again, it's something we're really passionate about once we've obviously got all the information we've collected at the baseline up front, that we've got, um, we've got this process at the, the end, we can actually measure, measure that difference. Have we made, uh, have we made a, a, an impact? And just using the couple of solutions that, um, that, I've, that I've already mentioned, um, so as a, as a working example, so the Wound Compass Clinical Support App. Um, so through our pilots, um, we showed that it's having really demonstrable um, success in terms of confidence, formally compliance, and then it's quick and easy to use. And there was a fairly, fairly a large scale pilot, so roughly 70 clinicians involved uh, through 400, uh, 400 assessments. So any time we, we think about implementing this, and it's something we've launched earlier on this, uh, earlier on this year, we follow that same process so we can come out and measure the baseline before we even think about implementing this and we can measure the output at the end as well to, 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 to assess the impact. Um, has it been uh, hopefully a positive, a, a positive impact? So we can kind of really see that, uh, really see that, that um, impact. And in terms of um, Formio and the, the, um, the uh, wound ecosystem I talked about, Again, this is a publication. We will share the slides after the event. Sorry, the text is quite small at the bottom there. Um, but we've got some really, really good tangible and measurable outcomes from uh, implementing a system across different areas. This is a, a trust that we've worked with um, up, in, uh, up in Hull, actually, up in, in the uh, northeast. And by implementing the system, um, we had a great uh, impact in terms of reduction of use of inappropriate um, dressings, efficiency gains in terms of giving, giving clinician time back, uh, and as I say, having that, that real positive impact in terms of, in terms of human, human resource. In summary, there's a lot of builds on the slides so I'll click through. Um, let's say a four stage um, process, Really about that review up front, as I say, gave the example of the survey that we uh, that we can conduct. But that's not the only thing we can do. There's obviously a lot of different. We can uh, look at different wound product usage data, lots of different ways and means, and we can bespoke a lot of that work as well uh, to, to to suit. It's not what we're trying to um, uh, hammer that square peg into into a round hole. Making sure that we've got that clear plan forward, as I say, I gave a couple of examples that, of the tools, and I say these are just two examples of a myriad of different. Um, Tools that we we're out on the uh, out in the atrium there with a number of other different tools that we can kind of talk you talk you through. But as I say just using those as a as a working example. Um, and as I said, we we're there to project manage and support um, you, you through implementation of any of these tools as well. Give that kind of resource uh, resource support. And as I said, I think ultimately that last piece around evaluation and making sure that we that we really maximise the uh, the impact. I think for me. It's kind of the really crucial thing, so we can because we might not have got things right at the beginning, but unless we do that, at the end we're not we're not going to know. So they said we can repeat the process again, or potentially move on to the next area of uh, area of focus. The whole area, the whole system is designed to be um, cyclical in that in that way, as I say, similar to uh, the PDSA um, cycle. No idea how I'm doing time wise, but I pretty much come to the end of my. Uh, um, presentation. So, but we have got a Q and A obviously afterwards, so we can. Um, we can pick up any questions then, but uh, thank you very much. I'd like to pass on to uh, Una Adderley from the National Wound Care Strategy.